Hello, everybody. Welcome back for a Wednesday Bible discussion and our gospel discussion today. And we'll be in the book of Luke. It's good to see you. We are a week before um, the last Wednesday before Christmas Eve. And uh, so we'll be joining the study together and traveling. And today we have Mary's Magnificat um, and a story to tell before the birth of Jesus. And um, and then I am taking vacation. So after Christmas Eve, um, there will be no Wednesday Bible discussions, ooh, gospel discussions until the middle of January. So I hope you come back and um, I look back to seeing you again. But we will be next week. We'll be next week. Don't give up. <laughs> uh, don't turn us off. Don't turn that channel till next week. So, but uh, if you have your Bibles handy, uh, turn to the book of Luke and uh, we're going to chapter one and verses 39 to 56. I'm doing the extended version today. And uh, by the way, I'm Scott Staub. I'm here to pastor at New Hanover Evangelical Lutheran Church. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Let us begin. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, <laughs> child inside of her lap. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How about that for a greeting, huh? <laughs> and why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? Elizabeth exclaims. For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child of my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And this is the same woman that was barren for all those years, right? And, and she's calling Mary blessed. And, and he herself has John the Baptist giving birth and soon to give birth to John the Baptist. And yet she's saying, oh my goodness, you know, blessed are you. And so uh, meanwhile, her husband, who was in disbelief, right? He, his tongue was uh, silenced by the angel, right? So he, he can't say anything. <laughs> And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant, and surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months, and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's quite interesting. You know, Luke um, is always handling delicately um he's speaking you know many years after jesus christ has died and um there's both rich and poor followers of the way of jesus christ of christianity the early church and so luke is always uh speaking to he must have had a rich clientele because he's always addressing the rich in his uh messages and here in the very first chapter again he brings it out and that his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation and lifted up the lowly, right? And he had brought down the powerful of their thrones. And they have seen the demise of the Herods, right? Herod the builder and then his son Herod and his other sons. And they have seen Caesars come and go and be executed and, and taken their own lives. And they probably have witnessed even Pontius Pilate committing suicide, the same one who... Um, involved in Jesus Christ's death. So the followers of Christianity have seen great rulers fall. And uh, and they're just waiting to be picked up, right? Because in here, are they reading other Gospels probably at this time. And uh, they're finding out that he will come shortly. They all have their candles lit. You know, they know the parables, you know, keep watch, you know, keep awake. And so here they are, keeping watch, keeping awake, you know, wide-eyed and waiting for the coming of Christ again. And uh, that's what we're celebrating here at Advent, right? The coming of Christ again. Uh, he was here, he'll come again, and then he was always... So we know Christ came, right? The spoiler alert for last week, you know, Christ was born, Christ came, 
Christ died on the cross for all of us, right? So we know that. We covered that last week. But here we have a quite interesting um, song by Mary, right? And we have different songs in the Bible, right? The first one that's uh, noted is the Song of Miriam, right? Moses' wife. And then so lifts up this song of being delivered from, from Israel when they get across the Red Sea. And then also you basically have um, you know Rahab and all these other songs, all sung by women in the Bible here. And then we have them noted in there. And they're, you know, the men are always like, Oh, look what I have done, you know, and, and, uh, I have, and you can imagine Joseph, you know, at this time or Dakra, I have produced child, you know, and, uh, meanwhile, the women are always like, it's up to God, you know, they're giving the glory to God and they're singing songs about it while the men, you can just imagine just prancing around, look what I did, you know, and, uh, so it's quite interesting when you look in these stories and about who is being magnified and by whom. So, um, this song had taken on many different genres, and you may have noticed that, um, you know, quite contemporarily, you know, we have it in the Holden Evening Prayer, and I love that part, uh, sung, and, uh, and so that is a, is a phenomenal piece, and then also we have it, you know, the Bach, and, and Bach has undertaken and give a score, and an arrangement for this, and a composition, and also it's very early on in the church, in the third century, they have picked up on chants of this, so uh, very early on in the Christian church, uh, it was into a chant, you know, so they, it's been used by the church for a very long time. However, um, it's not all about Mary, and uh, some people try to take it about Mary, but um, and it, it's by theologians um, and a contemporary writer to um, uh, alike want to make sure. And then my message today too: it's about God, and even Mary proclaims it's about God. Martin Luther took on his task at a very um, you know early age. Um, he starts writing, and in 1520, he starts this writing of this Magnificat, and he writes about it as a gift to a young prince. Now, he had picked a very good subject to be as a young prince as a gift. You know, it was meant to be as like a Christmas gift, and then um, Luther gets called away to Worms, and then we know what happens at Worms, and then he goes in hiding, and then so he picks up on this again um, while he's fighting the Rol Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope. He kind of interrupts his writing of this Magnificat to take a time out, and then he finishes it during his time in exile and in um, hiding. Um, he finishes the the present and gives it to this young seventeen year old Prince John Frederick. Well, what a better person, because uh, John would become the elector for that area. There's only a certain amount of princes that were electors, meaning that they were had the power to elect who would become the next Holy Roman Emperor, which there was this area countries that were united and and, um, and this Christianity uh, mega state. And uh, so you have the Holy Roman Emperor being elected by these few electors. And John would become one. They were very powerful princes uh, within the world in Western Europe at that time. Also, um, you know, uh, they had armies. And so, <coughs> excuse me. So they had, um, John um, actually had an army. Um, and he was able to hide Martin Luther then in, you know, in favor of what Martin Luther had given with this gift at a young age. He winds up hiding uh, Martin Luther and protecting him and being a staunch uh, component for him. And uh, he had a mighty army that kept the um, uh, the Muslim armies uh, from coming over from the mountains from Austria and invading down to the Pope. So uh, pretty much what John said just went, you know. <laughs> the Pope and the Emperor go, okay, you guys, you're fighting the battles and you're keeping the Turks away from us. Um, we love you and whatever you do. And okay, we, you know, you just keep Luther, just keep him out of trouble and we're fine with everything. <laughs> so it's a very political way. But Martin Luther and this whole political scheme and everything that's swirling around in the world to then, he is picking up this delicate subject and why. Because John Frederick is so powerful and the electors and any princes are, are so powerful at the time, he wanted to make sure that they studied the gift. 
and that they went and did for the better good of the common good of all the people. And also is that um, he wanted to have them to be humble. And so what better part? And he writes this whole long letter, this treatise, this gift um, to John Frederick, and he uses Mary as the example. Humbleness. Mary knows she is simply lowly. However, does she never assume or say that um, her status will change by accepting becoming the mother of the Son of God? Nor will she ever use her position further on in the Bible or in any of the stories as the Son of God to gain favor. She's not looking to be put up on a pedestal. People think that we, you know, marry a special thing for prayers for us and everything else. But Martin Luther and, and believe that, uh, and I believe that, you know, it's great. And, uh, and what she had done, but not because of what she did, but be, she was chosen as this humble being. And she remained humble throughout this whole experience. And Luther wants to know that this prince and so forth, and based on this scripture reading, is that you're lucky. You're lucky to be born as a prince. Not everybody is that lucky. And and let us tell you that, you know, you among everybody else in this world, and especially the people inside your princedom, um, are, they, you're all the same in God's eyes. And God chooses the low as well as he chooses the high. So you have no more favor in God's kingdom than anybody else. And I think that's an important message here. And Mary does it. And then it is an example of God giving God's grace and um, eternal life and choosing people simply because God chooses them. They didn't earn it. Um, they are God's children and God chooses them eternally to be with them and graced upon them. And that's message, uh, Martin Luther's message to John Frederick. It's Mary's message to us. And she even says, you know, it's important to note that the whole song is a tribute to God and what God can do and not the magnificence of Mary, accepting the Holy Spirit and saying, hmm, let me think. Well, if my name would be then the Virgin Mary for whatever in your church, um, and if you build statues to me, then okay, um, enter me through the Holy Spirit and let's make children, you know, <laughs> the child of God. You know, she doesn't do any of that, you know, um, but she says, my soul magnifies the Lord. Mary always magnifies the Lord and gives a tribute unto God. And I think that's the first thing that Martin Luther wanted of John Frederick to remember, but also in us in our daily lives. Not Martin Luther, but God. And when we read and what we do, um, we do it to magnify the Lord and through the great gifts that God gives us each and every day. So I hope you feel blessed. I truly do. And that whatever you do and whatever you accomplish, it is to magnify the Lord and the gifts given through you. For God has chosen you, and not because you earned it or anything special, but God has chosen to love you freely and given you to this gift of eternal life freely. So God bless you all. Merry Christmas and go get them in the meantime. So please let me know. Give me any comments or uh, share this with others. Peace. And I'll see you next week.